Hi, I'm Patrick Harris with Cycle Sports TV, and we're coming to you from SEMA 2012 in Las Vegas, Nevada. In a second, we're going to head inside and see what kind of cool stuff we can find. All right, we're here at SEMA 2012, and we're here with Adam Canny from Tana Motors. And we just showed you a really economical 80 mile per gallon trike. Well, this isn't so economical, but it's probably a little bit faster. Adam, tell us a little bit about this amazing vehicle we see behind us here. Well, Pat, the, uh, the vehicle you see behind us here is the, uh, the Tana Motors uh, Invader. This one in particular is our Roadster model, the TR3. Uh, it's a brand new vehicle, brand new concept. We've been cultivating this for about the last three years, and uh, we actually have two models that we'll be releasing later this year in the, in the uh, second quarter of 2013. So is this considered a motorcycle? It is, in fact. It's uh, registered license in all the United States as a motorcycle. Uh, so depending on where you're at, uh, you'd have to wear a helmet potentially. I, I can tell you that a lot of states are taking a more relaxed uh, seat or stance on the, uh, the fact that it has automotive type, type controls. They're saying, well, you might not necessarily need to take a two-wheel motorcycle riding exam, maybe just a written exam. And in some cases where they're saying if you have overhead coverage, you don't necessarily require a helmet, they're relaxing the helmet law in those states. So it's basically a state to state as to what you have to do. In some states you might just have a regular license and be okay. Yeah, exactly. I'd say just if you're going to buy one, just check with your local state to see what the, what the local laws are pertaining to you. Okay, now all the gearheads out there, especially the motorcycle people, probably the first question they're going to ask is if there's no real hood, but what's under the cowl there? What's powering this? Well, uh, under, under the rear cowl, we actually have a, a Suzuki Hayabusa engine, a 1340cc, you know, the legendary uh, superbike for, for a number of years here. Uh, we chose it uh, because of that prowess and that, and that genre uh, following, if you will. It's, uh, it's, it's got a big following both here domestically in the U.S. as well as abroad. So a lot of respect for, the, for that particular engine, and it's uh, been, a, been a great choice in my mind for this vehicle. So that's really, this thing's really built for speed. This is a sports car of the trikes. Oh yeah, definitely get something going. You've got a power to weight ratio here that's on par with any of the, to the, uh, today's top supercars. So we're talking about zero to 60 times, sub four seconds, 150 mile an hour top speed, you know, skid pad braking in the 1G range for both of those. So, I mean, from a, from a dollars and cents standpoint, I know you're probably gonna go here next. It's a great value for the dollar because I'd say there's probably no other vehicle on the market at this price point that can do what the Invader can do. Now, you, you have two models, and we'll talk about, right now, we'll talk about the other one. Now, what's basically, what's the difference between the two of them? Well, with, with the, uh, the original vehicle, it was a, was a coupe version. And uh, as, we, as we got some feedback, our very first SEMA here, you know, we heard, heard from a lot of people, we went back and made some refinements. So as we went back from our initial concept, which was literally down and dirty, hand-fabricated chassis, clay modeled it, made a fiberglass body, produced it in just a few short months and brought it here as, as a concept, uh, we went back and basically did uh, an automotive downtown engineering job on the Invader. One of the biggest things that we found was uh, an improvement that we'd like to point out to everybody is that we made the cockpit bigger. Uh, the good news for guys, your, your size yeah, yeah, I was going to say for us. Yeah. We'll actually be able to drive this vehicle, unlike, unlike our competitor. Uh, you know, we've created a, 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 an interior space that's designed around a 95th percentile male. For those of you at home that don't, doesn't know what that means, hey, we're talking about a guy that's six foot tall, 220, 230 yeah. pounds. Uh, the guys that want to own these vehicles are our size, Pat. So we're trying to make it fit them. So we made the cockpit wider. We made it longer, so it's it, getting in and out of the vehicle. Ingress, egress is much, much improved. Because I found a lot of vehicles here that are really cool that I could never get in and out of. And that's a big thing. That looks awesome. It's too bad I could never drive it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, we, we didn't want to appeal to just the you know the guys in the 150 pound, you know, under five foot six range. And listen, there's a lot of guys that will probably be that guy, yeah. and this will definitely accommodate them. Uh, we we've got sport bucket seatings that we develop in here, and it's got seven inches of travel, and we also have the ability to adjust the pedals on the floor, so we can accommodate anybody from a small woman up to a big guy like us in this vehicle. So I think that's going to be part of the appeal of it. Now, and who's your audience for this? Because obviously, you know, you have people that ride motorcycles, you have people that drive cars. This lies somewhere in the middle. So who's, who's going to buy this? Who's going to be interested in this? Well, we think it's an interesting cross-section. We think for sure that there's an aging segment of bikers, guys that have been out there on Harleys and other touring bikes that enjoy the sport of motorcycling. They like the visceral feel of getting the air in their face, and they like to do it with their wife, girlfriend, spouse, significant other. Uh, we think this is going to be a vehicle for them as they transition in, off of two wheels onto a, a different type of platform that still gives you the best of both worlds with a little bit more creature comfort 
On the other side of the genre, we also think there's a young group of guys that are affluent, up and coming, that might want to own a motorcycle now, maybe have young families worried about the safety of being able to get on a two-wheel vehicle. Their spouses usually are the ones that are worried, you know. Uh, I think this would be a vehicle for, for that guy that's on the, uh, you know, making the seventy five to $100,000 range that really wants to get something that's totally unique, completely terrify all of his neighbors because they've never seen this before, and uh, be the first guy on the block to own one. This is, this is that guy's car. I, I really do believe that. Now, what is this going to set somebody back? Well, uh, the base price for the Invader Coupe is going to be uh, $49.9. Our goal has always been to keep it under $50,000. We're, uh, we're significantly undercutting our competition by uh, almost $6,000, base price to base price, and at the same time offering a lot of features that they, quite frankly, don't even have on their option list as standard equipment. Uh, one of the things I'd point out as it's rolling around right now is the, is the saddlebags. We've got these awesome saddlebag storage compartments on either side. They're watertight. They lock. Uh, we've got some soft bags that go in and out of them. So packing up for a his and her getaway weekend is a breeze. Because uh, that's an issue with a lot of the, these vehicles is there isn't a lot of storage space. You know, I mean, there's some cars like that, too. But if you're taking a trip and if you are wearing a helmet, if you, you know, you're a little more safety conscious, where do you put it? So is there enough room you have two people wearing helmets and they got some jackets and some other miscellaneous stuff? Can we fit it in this? Yeah, absolutely. The saddlebags on this are pretty much about the same uh, size from a le uh, leader standpoint as a standard touring bike, BMW, Harley Davidson touring bike. So if you're used to touring on a bike like that, the Invader is going to meet that meet that need and actually have enough storage uh, for you to be able to do that. So now, if you're not driving it the way you probably should be driving it, and you're kind of just putting around town with it, what is somebody going to get gas mileage out of something like this? I think that's a great question. I think what's awesome about the Invader is you're going to have the performance of a supercar and the economic, uh, economically speaking, you're going to have the fuel economy of a, of a motorcycle. We're estimating the fuel mileage being somewhere between 30 and 35 miles per gallon, city highway. We're actually have some test numbers on that later this year. But uh, with fuel economy like that and performance, you know, where we're talking, there really is no other vehicle anywhere in the segment, automotive or motorcycles, that is even similar to this. So it really doesn't have to be the, the weekend warrior. You could actually drive this to work and save a few bucks on gas and, and, and look pretty cool doing it. I, I think so. Well, one thing I definitely want to, want to point out to your, to your listeners or your watchers at home, uh, the the uh, the vehicle, since it is a motorcycle, can be operated in an HOV lane. So for those of you guys that are in California, uh, yeah. those of you guys on the East Coast where they have HOV lanes, this is a perfect commuter because you can operate this by yourself, by yourself. in yeah. HOV lane. And and that's a, a huge advantage of anybody here that's watching this is from L.A. Or it, getting around L.A. when you're driving by yourself, uh, yeah, HOV lanes, love them, love them. Well, Adam, thank you so much. I appreciate the time, and this is a, an awesome vehicle. Thank so you. Much. All right.